Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Project Zomboid, shall we? Continuing with our complete beginner's guide. We're covered in blood. We've been fighting a lot of zombies. And we got a trash bag. So, some of the things that I want to start working on for this episode would be continuing to explore the map. So I'm going to pull out the map. And you can see that I'm going to put a check mark on this house that we've gone through here. And we're on this side. There are some parks and there are some houses around this park. Now, of course, what that means is we really, really have to be mindful of zombies hiding behind the tree because trees really obscure our line of sight. And the zombies can sometimes be absolutely silent. They're notorious for being ninjas. And just maybe they're standing there. They're not even moving. So you don't even see them at first. Your eye isn't drawn to them. And then they can just pop out. So you got to be really careful with exploring these um, suburban, you know, kind of backyards that are packed with trees like this. And I like to zoom way, way out and take a gander at what's down here. And Ooh, okay. Well... We might have some interesting stuff that I want to explore down here, but in a moment, uh, for the moment, let's just check out this house and continue to search. I'm really on the lookout for a bag. Something better to carry stuff in um, would be great. Okay, whoa, they have like a military cot in this room. Very austere. They have two dogs. Um, interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of poke around circling around holding the right mouse button to look everywhere yep a zombie saw us we you heard the music chop up and scare us and then we got panicked because of it this person came through the window okay so let's just keep her in view and have her targeted and just smack her in the face when she gets here push her back and then she's pushed down and we can just walk on her and just keep stomping until she's gone and she is gone now that did heat us up uh because you know i'm wearing so many clothes but what can you do all right so she's got a nice silver necklace if you want to look stylish which i don't know why you would but nothing wrong with a little bling if you want it now unfortunately appears to be uh you know teenage zombie coming out there all right so I want to go through this window, but this is a good time to show this. I haven't broken a window yet. She broke the, zom the window, the zombie did, coming through it. And you'll notice that on the ground, there's a bunch of broken glass. Broken glass, if you're barefoot, will destroy your feet, like Bruce Willis and Die Hard. But also, it's noisy, so it will attract zombies. Now, if I tried to climb through this window, and you could tell it's busted, I would get cut up on my hands and such because of the broken glass and you don't want to get a laceration or become you know bloody from a window so what you can do is right click on it and then you can select in the drop down box the context menu remove broken glass now you have to have a weapon equipped to do this okay um but i have you know my crowbar so I can just slide it around and you go through the animation and now there's no broken glass so when I climb through this window okay um oops and when I come over here and just climb through this I don't get hurt now I know that in this kind of like it's got a very rustic log cabin look on the inside there's a zombie right out there so we're gonna have to be careful okay we can hear him kind of pounding on the door perhaps um, but he might just be crawling and not able to move i'm gonna go ahead and move right here i'm gonna right click oop, uh, the door and hmm, i think the game is thinking that i'm trying to hit this light switch uh anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and just open it but i'm gonna hold my right mouse button the door is barricaded oh that's why um so it's barricaded on the other side i'm getting thirsty i'm gonna drink okay and then we're just going to hold E to climb through the window again. And we can go in on the other side. Like, if he's down there, it's not really barricaded. I think it's just that that zombie is pushing on the door. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say open the door. It's locked. Okay. So we can go ahead and remove the broken glass. Okay. 
And it sounds like the zombie is still trying to get through that door. And he is. He's also on the ground, so you can just kind of smack him if you want until it's gone. You can also just step on top of him um, and go ahead and smash his head with your shoes. But my feeling there was um, I just there was something off about it where he was still moving around. And so I didn't want to miss the timing and I risked it and just, you know, uh, I didn't want to miss the timing by risking it. So I just used my crowbar. Now you'll see I'm starting to get drowsy and that's OK. Let's go ahead and look around. There's a bunch of stuff here. Um, there's some denim shorts if we, you know, want to wear that, which we don't. Um, I'm going to kind of close this and let's see. We don't need any of that. There's a metal bar if we were trying to craft. Um, and there's a bunch of VHSs. So they were sitting in here with a microwave. And this is like a... It feels like it's a summer camp or something. You know, like it's a cabin. And they were just eating and, you know. There's a bunch of beer bottles and cigarettes, okay. Uh, you could take a plastic cup if you want a water container. Um, you can eat some junk food. Let's check in this fridge. What's in here? There's some yogurt. That's actually nice. And there's a freezer as well with a bunch of frozen stuff. Interesting. And uh, there's a microwave. Fun. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, let's hit the TV. And we can tune in to Life and Living and just turn it on. Um, now, by the way, I haven't opened this door yet. Um, but we did look in that room and we didn't see a zombie. So, I'm going to open it anyway, just in case. We don't want any surprises. So, they were just really camping out here. And I'm going to click on this bureau. Uh, here's some more of Mom's clothing. And, uh, meh. Meh. Okay. Um, nothing fantastic. Mechanics Volume 1 and Metalwork Volume 1 are pretty nice, though. So um, let me go ahead and close the TV window. I'm going to go into my inventory on my side. And I'm going to uh, scroll this down. And I'm going to look in my bag. Now, remember, when you're cycling through the inventory containers you have, uh, I'm, I'm going to pause the game to do this. I don't want any more time to pass. You can just click on your garbage bag. And I want to see, do I have this book already? I have Fishing Volume 1. So I'm just going to take um, Metalwork and Mechanics Volume 1, just the early stuff, and put it in my um, bag right now. But I can't, oh, I can't transfer it because the game is paused. So I'm going to unpause it, and now I'll do the work that I had skilled up. And then um, I'm going to uh, look at my overall encumbrance. And we're still okay carrying those in our trash bag. So we're not too encumbered, no problem. Okay, I'm going to push I. And close that up. Anything good over here? There's a blue pen, I'll actually take that. And keep moving. So, because we're getting sleepy, and you can see that, uh, we are going to need to think about, you know, where are we going to sleep? Uh, this kid had... Oh, he had a gun. You know, so... This could be a fully grown man, by the way. I'm not sure. He's just on the ground. Uh, but he's got a gun, which if you find guns in the game, you can save them for later if you want. Okay? Its condition is good. I have no bullets for it. Um, and it has seven bullets out of 15 inside. So you would have a gun, an M9, you know, like where James Bond or something like that. And... That's nice in theory. Like, you know, if I was in a situation like this, a gun would seem like it would be a good idea, but it's not. Now, look how many zombies are on down there. The reason is it will make zombies everywhere come to fight you. And if you have, like, seven bullets and 15 zombies come, well, good luck. So we'd much rather be quiet. We're also not very good with a gun. So if you want to use a gun and you're not good, probably take a shotgun or something just so you can hit better. But even then... I'm not enthusiastic about our chances. All right, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look at the map. 
and I'm going to put a check mark on this house. You know, you could leave a note for yourself if you wanted to note that there was a gun, but I'm instead going to go down this street and take a look at some of the houses over here. What I'm trying to do is find a place to fortify. I'd love to have a base that we can operate from. So what that would mean is that we would find a house and we would start to barricade up the doors and the windows of the house so that we could reliably use the home without fear at all of any zombies. Preferably, though, what I want for our base would be a two-story home. Two-story homes are fantastic for making a base out of because what you can do is completely seal in the bottom level and then create a rope out the window out of sheets that you can climb up but the zombies cannot. So then you can just completely have the whole place to yourself. Now this house almost wants to have a second level, but I don't think it does. I don't see any windows, unfortunately. So we're looking still. Can I find a place that's got that second story, right? Um, wow, look at all these farming plots. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go over to this house. And you see it has a bunch of windows, okay? So... This is a really nice family home, open floor plan. Um, it doesn't look like there's zombies inside at all. And I like it a good bit. Another thing that you want to look out for if you're making your home or trying to make a base um, is you want to be sure that there's a zombie way out there in the yard in the kind of lot between the homes. You want to try to not be near the center of the town because the, the zombies usually congregate more closely towards the middle of the town. So it can be really helpful. I'm just looking in all the rooms from the outside. This room, this house seems fine. Um, it can be really helpful to just be off the beaten path a bit so that you're away from more zombies. So we'll try the front door. It's locked. Okay, no problem. I'm just going to try to pull open this window. Now, if you're ever pulling open a, home, uh, a window, okay, and it sets off a house alarm, you need to run away as soon as possible. You need to get away from that house. The zombies will all come toward to investigate that noise. You can use home alarms for your benefit if you want to lure zombies away, but you absolutely don't have time to really stay and try to loot the house. If... um. A house alarm goes off okay so just be aware of that now I'm just kind of zooming in looking around the house it looks okay but we didn't get to peek in all of the rooms so I'm gonna open and now notice how what I did right there was I am holding right mouse button so that I've got the attack enabled and I then push the E key in front of the door so that I don't have to do anything in one swift animation I could smash a zombie in the face if it were in there and looking at us. Okay, this room is dark. So this is a little scary. So you got to come in and just look around really fast. Um, and wow, there's no windows in the kids' room. That's creepy. Let's turn on the light. Um, okay, and then uh, I'm just clearing out the house to make sure it's okay before I move in. All right, and let's see. And by move in, I really just mean loot the place. Looks like a, just a storage room. Interesting. Okay, and let's check this out. Wow. This house seems uh, one last... No, I did check. I've checked all the rooms. This house seems completely undisturbed. All right, so I'm going to close the uh, curtains here so that we can maybe look around a little bit better. Just go around closing all the curtains. Now, we're getting, like, super tired, so we're going to need to sleep, and we're going to sleep here probably. We're hungry, we're thirsty, let's just call it a night in here, but let's go ahead and um, close the window. And, um, okay. Oh, there's a closet that I haven't gone in yet. Make sure that there's no surprises. Let's see what's on the bench. Wow, there's a gun case. Um, okay. Uh, and there's a battery... A screwdriver is amazing. Um, I think we have one, but let me just remember. And then um, 
I'll take the gun case because I want to look inside it, but it's really heavy. So I'm going to go into the gun case and I'm going to just kind of unpack it and, um, oops, go here. And we drop it. So this would be good if we wanted to carry a gun around. And you can see that, actually, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I couldn't see it in my inventory as easily as I wanted to, but uh, I think maybe I need to equip it to be able to look into it like that. But there's a shotgun and a box of shells. So that's really nice if we want to take on a whole bunch of zombies. Um, but we don't. Uh, not this point in the game. It's not wise. Um, and it's just something that's great to have, but it's too heavy to carry around, in my opinion. If you want to carry around your shotgun, do it. But I don't feel the need to do that, and I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, okay. I can't close that. There's no curtains. So here's what we're going to do. This house is as uh, shut as we can make it right now. Um, we're really tired, so we're going to go eat, and we're going to drink. And then we're going to try to barricade the home a little bit and sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and drink. And I'm going to just push I. And let's see what's in the fridge. And, um, yeah, we can just drink the milk. And this will help us out a lot. Um, and we become uh, encumbered while holding the milk because we've just got too much stuff on us. But that's okay. That'll go away in a second. And we're still a bit hungry. So let's just go around looking around. Um, ooh, there's a cooking pot. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And let's see. Let's just check through all these different containers. There's some crackers. Um, a water bottle is very good. Water bottle is just fresh water that you can carry around. Um, and let's see. Anything else? Canned chili. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and um, eat. You know, I'm going to open these peas. And then... Let's just see what these give us. Uh, this is pretty good. So I'm going to eat like half the can and see if this takes care of our hunger. It did. Now we're just tired. Okay, I'm going to push I to close the inventory. I'm going to right click, make sure this door is locked. It is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to click on pick up and I'm going to get this chair. Okay, and then we're just going to click um, tab for place. Remember, tab switches between the different furniture options. I'm going to just hold left click and drag this chair around until the back is facing the door like that. That's how I want to do it. Okay, and we can fortify this home more readily if we want, um, but not right now. We are too tired to do that right now, and I don't want to, um, you know, absolutely inhibit our ability to escape if things go wrong because we're tired. So I'm going to pick up this chair. And I'm going to go down here, and then we're just going to place the chair right there. Perfect. So now we have the front door um, set, and I'm going to kind of click this again to right-click, and yep, the door is locked. Okay, there's a chair in front of both doors, and that's locked. So in that sense, I feel pretty good. Now, I'm going to sleep in this bed, the bunk bed, even though it's tiny, because there's no windows, okay? So what I can do to even make myself safer is I can um, pick up this chair right here and just walk over here, and we can then um, close the door and, and put the chair here but you can see the door opens out so it's not the most helpful anyway um whoops i removed the floor that's ridiculous you can do that um with the crowbar okay now good okay i'm fine with that for sleeping if you want what you can do is just like um grab the gun case and then bring it into the bedroom if you want to like sleep with the shotgun or something like that. It's not a not really going to help us, but um, I'm going to close the door, and I'm going to then uh, go to, to my inventory. You could see our heart is um, pulsing. We're taking damage because we're tired and we're carrying too much stuff. So all I have to do is just say um, drop this right here. All right, and then 
um, we're just hurting ourselves by being awake too long, and I'm going to sleep. It's 1 a.m. Let's go ahead and sleep. Okay, I'm going to go here, and oops, let me close this. And let me, um, oops, I didn't mean to equip a knife. That's interesting. Um, equip primary. Okay, close the inventory, and we can't lock the door, but I'm going to left click on this bed, right click on it rather, and just say um, sleep. Yes, I want to sleep. I rested for 10 minutes is what I did. Not enough. All the windows in this house are closed, and we boarded up. Um, we put chairs on the door, uh, so that's giving us some protection. I could have even turned out the lights to be less conspicuous, but to be honest, we patrolled the area around this home. No zombies, no zombies inside it. We're not making a lot of noise. We should be pretty okay to sleep right there, but... Anything can happen. And so what I want to do now is, even though uh, this is not my ideal home, I'm going to fortify this home so that I can demonstrate to you what that would look like. Okay? So I want this whole front of the house sealed up. I'm going to then right-click on um, this table and then go to the bottom option for disassemble. And you can see if I want to take apart this table, I'm going to need a hammer. And if I want to take apart this chair, I need a saw and a hammer. So what that means is I'm not actually in a position to start fortifying with planks a, a base because we still haven't found a hammer. However, we haven't completely explored this house. So let's just get a little drink. Okay, we're a little hungry. Let's go ahead and go in here. And actually, if I go into my regular inventory, I should still have the canned peas. Let's just eat the rest of it. Now we're getting bored just a little bit. Not enough to worry about it. I'm going to push I, close the inventory. Okay, so first things first. Uh, we already checked. We got the gun case, and I'm going to just... Um, we have a screwdriver, but if we don't, there's one in there. I really want to check in this room. Okay, there's a hole puncher. No good. Um, there's... Uh, a bunch of office supplies. So they were like moving in an office in here. We already have a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, we don't need office supplies. And that's unfortunate. I was hoping for more hardy supplies. We're going to have to go into their shed for that, I think. Now there's a leather jacket. Okay. So what you can always do is leather jacket is great. And you can look at your own leather jacket and just see, like, is the condition of my leather jacket? No, it's still fine. So I don't need to switch. But you can, I often switch my stuff if they've got the same thing that's just in better condition. Um, denim jeans, that's what we're wearing. And what you got over here? Alarm clock. Okay. Well, that could be good if we want to use it as a bomb to, like, lure zombies away. Okay, what's in this chest over here? Sleeping tablets, these are great. We're going to take them. Medicine of any kind are amazing. Um, and is there anything on this table? Not really. Okay. Then let's p peel out of here. And unfortunately, it just looks like not too much going on inside the house. Let's check this bookshelf. Um, they have... Uh, some books that are good for leveling skills. They have some, um, some other, yeah, there's some good books here for sure. Okay. And I'm just going to make sure there isn't just, uh, in the kitchen, you can use sometimes find tools as well. Now this cook pot, let me show you something. I'm going to grab this cook pot. It's going to be heavy. Okay. But I'm going to put it outside and I'll show you why. I'm going to push I to close the inventory. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this chair and move it out of the way so we can get out of the house. I'm just going to push tab and put it right there. And quit. And I'm going to go ahead and open the door and just make sure there's no zombies. Now, right here in front of this basketball hoop, I'm going to go into my inventory and I'm going to take this cooking pot and I'm going to just drop it on the ground like that. 
you could see it's right there. This actually can be used to collect water. So right now, the water and the electricity in the town have not yet been turned off. At the early game, you've got water, you've got power, but eventually that will be shut off, okay? And remember, you can toggle how much time you have before it shuts off um, in the game creation mode if you do sandbox. Now, while it's on, we can just drink. Then after they turn it off, in the sinks and the toilets, you can drink what water remains in them, and then it's empty forever. But if you put something like a cook pod, or even better, a rain barrel, which we can actually build with this character uh, pretty easily, you can collect rainwater and have a source of water. Now, you'll have to boil it, but it gives you something to drink, which is going to be very important. Right now, it's not huge, but I just want to get that in your mind that that's a very useful thing to do. Now, the, there's trees back here, so I'm going to their shed because I want to see if they have any tools. There's also a shed next door, so we can try to find a hammer or something. But I'm just looking around. I'm going to zoom way out. There's probably still that zombie drifting around in the trees, but without any noise, um, he doesn't have much reason to go for us. Oh, there's a window on the back of this uh, shed. So let's look in. Okay, let's see if we can open the window. We got it. All right, there's nothing in here. I could clearly see that there's no zombies. I'm going to climb in, um, but you never know. Just look around. Good. And what's on the shelf? Okay, there's scrap metal for crafting something, um, and that's it. So, like, you can make, you know, scrap metal if you're good at crafting, but we are not good enough at crafting right now for that to happen. I'm holding E to climb over this privacy fence. But you really want to zoom out and double check, okay? What is that? My God, in the middle of this garden. Is that a statue? No. That's some kind of, like, horrifying zombie and a statue, potentially. So, anyway, I'm going to look in here. Looks good. I'm going to go around to the back and just make sure there's no zombie that's, like, waiting to kill me. And... Um, I don't know what to say about that, except it's creepy. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and open this window or try. We got it, and I'm going to climb right through. All right, we know that there's no zombie in here. Oh, yes. Here we go. All right, we got a wrench, we got a garden saw, and we got a lug wrench. Okay, the garden saw is what we want right now. So I'm going to go into my inventory, and I'm just going to take this garden saw, um... And put it in my bag. I'm even going to take this wrench. And we're just going to drag him into our bag. And we're going to see. Hopefully this doesn't encumber us too much. It did. So what we need to do then. In that case is. I'm going to go ahead and drop this. And I'm going to take this kitchen knife. And I'm going to put it in my bag. And still we're encumbered. Okay. So we still have too much. I can take the can opener. And put it in my bag. And we're just slightly encumbered. So I need to drop something. Okay. I've got these dirty rags. I'm going to get rid of these. It'll take me a second to actually do that. Okay. Um, but now we're good. All right. So I'm going to want to start offloading things because I am getting a bit encumbered. Let's just make sure we've checked the entirety of this uh, shed. All right. There's wire. There's pipe. There's scrap sheet and yes we got it we got a hammer we actually got a box of screws and a plank as well so we've really really scored right here okay so i'm gonna take um the hammer is a definite the plank is amazing but it's heavy so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and just take all of this stuff and try to put it in my trash bag now the trash bag can hold it okay because if i select my trash bag you'll see that it can actually hold up to 20 and this is at 13.2, so I can fit it in my trash bag. But the problem is that even with that, I'm encumbered. So what this means is my movement speed is reduced. This is okay if I'm not going to fight something. Now, what I can also do is I can take my crowbar and I can right click and I can say, um, attach it to my back. Okay. Now, by doing that, by attaching the crowbar on my back, okay. I have a hand free, but you can see that my encumbrance actually got worse. So it's better for me to equip this as my primary weapon for encumbrance purposes. Now, I'm going to immediately climb through this window 
and I'm going to push I so I can see and just look around, make sure we're okay. There is a zombie that's coming at us. I'm going to climb the fence. Now, hopefully, that's enough breaking line of sight that the zombie doesn't come over. The zombie came over. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push um, inventory. I'm going to look at the zombie. We can see it coming, okay? And we're going to need to fight. There's just nothing. There's no two ways about it. Now, the encumbrance is reducing our movement speed, but we should be okay fighting. Just hit it when it's green. Okay, it went down, and then we got it. Okay, let's go back inside. We need to drop some stuff. We got way too much stuff. We're getting hot. All kinds of things going on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the door. So now, I'm going to go into my bag. And you know all those books I was carrying? You know, like, uh, yeah, these babies. We can put some of this stuff down. I don't need to be carrying all of these books. Okay? And I'm just going to take them, and I'm going to put them, just drag them out and just drop them on the floor. You can see I'm putting books on the ground. Okay? And also, what you can do is you can go up to the top here, and you can sort this by encumbrance encumbrance descending and you can see oh this plank for example this frying pan like this wrench we're going to take it out put it on the ground don't need that right now and then frying pan i also don't need this right now i'm going to take it out and then now we're no longer encumbered okay we're sweating a little bit but we are no longer encumbered we can go get something to drink so i'm going to right click and say drink it up now at this point, we have some awesome things that we can do. I can right click on this table and now I can disassemble the large dark table because I have a hammer, I have carpentry, and um, I have, that's actually all you need is a hammer to disassemble this. Now, when you want to disassemble something, you need to have the tool required and your skill in that action determines the successful uh, the rate of success that you'll have into disassembling it and getting th something that you want that's usable out of it. So if I right click this table and then I left click, I'm going to try to break it, okay? Now it's going, 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 and here I go. Now you saw that first progress bar. That was my character actually taking the hammer out of his bag so that he could then, and then he had to equip it. And so now he's using that weapon, okay? And we busted it up, and look, we got a plank and some nails. I can look at the floor. You see we got a plank and nails. So we actually were able to dis disassemble this table into something good. Now, we can't barricade this window yet because even though we got, we have two planks, okay, and we have some nails, the problem is that we need two nails per plank on the window that we want to barricade. So we're going to need to do a little bit more work to get there. So I need to right click on this chair and I need to disassemble this purple wooden chair. Now this one's going to take a hammer, a saw, and um, our carpentry skill will determine whether or not we get what we want. Okay, and we got clearly um, a plank, all right, but we didn't get any nails. And so we're going to need to find some better stuff to take apart that might give us nails, right? We can take this apart too. And by the way, um, disassembling furniture that we're doing here, this is something amazing in the sense that it gives us, it's raising our skill. So if I go to my character, all right, and I go to my skills, we're actually slowly, and I mean slowly, working on our carpentry. You see here how we have 24.9 skill towards level 4. Um, now we have 33.2 experience, okay, toward going up a level because we disassembled something. You see we're leveling up our long blunt by using our crowbar. We've been stealthing, so we're raising that a little bit. And our maintenance has also been going up. So we're raising some of our skills just by doing stuff. Now... You see this one right here? I'm going to take apart this counter, okay? There's nothing in it, 
and I don't need a countertop over here. So I'm just trying to remove as much stuff as possible. And this is a fantastic way to improve, okay, your carpentry. Now, if you're going to be doing this a lot, if you're going to be trying to take apart a lot of stuff, I recommend before you do that, okay, make sure that um, we got some nails. Perfect. So we got nails um, from the, cap the counter. If you've got books, make sure before you start disassembling stuff, read a book on carpentry to get that skill multiplier. All right, I'm going to right click on the window. Now that I have one plank, okay, a hammer, and two nails, I'm, I'm ready to go for barricading this window. So, uh, you also have to have um, the carpentry skill to do it, okay? Got one. So we just put a plank across this window, okay? Now, if I want to put more planks, I'm going to need more nails. Now, when I say make sure you have the carpentry skill, um, what I mean to say also is uh, you can do it with low carpentry. It's just there's you have a higher chance of success if you have good carpentry, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and um, equip this in my secondary, the bag. And you'll see, um, I'm going to equip this in primary, okay? And then I'm going to take the saw and the hammer, and per just for the time being, I'm actually going to just put them on the ground right here because I'm using them pretty much only for the business of putting up planks. Now we need to eat. So I'm just going to roll over here and uh, eat up. And we can just... Uh, you know, open the tuna. Now that means we have to take out the can opener and then in our, uh, we did that and we've got it and I'm just going to eat. Okay. Um, the whole thing. We're really, really hungry. So this will help us. You'll notice that our encumbrance is only 11 because we're hungry. But once we eat and we're full, our encumbrance goes back to 12 because our, um, satiety level was negatively impacting our hunger. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and drink. And, you know, when we looked at these books, I didn't see a carpentry level three, I think is what we need at this point. Um, no, actually, we need carpentry level two to raise our skill. Um, so we don't have that. But what we can continue to do is just like right click on this and we can disassemble this. Uh, we just need to pick up our hammer and our saw. So we're going to keep doing that, right? I'm going to just um, get off of this and I'm going to go, okay, hammer, grab it, grab that hammer. And grab that saw. And we're just going to spend some time here taking stuff apart. So if you have your skill books, read those up. And if you don't, just keep practicing. You might get garbage when you disassemble, but it's raising your skill. You do not, by the way, at all, have to be trying to barricade a house right now. Um... I'm only doing it for the tutorial purposes of demonstrating like how you would do this, all right? But you could try to find a better house. We got a plank out of that. Um, it, it's entirely up to you what you would want to do. The nice thing about our carpentry skill is you can see we're not really wrecking too much. Like sometimes all you'll get is wood scraps, meaning like you destroyed it and you didn't get anything good from it. Um, so it's very, very nice uh, for us. We got some more nails, okay? And we got, now we have two planks and some scraps. So we can just keep going on all these and, and ripping them up. And you can, of course, see that with our character and the skills, you know, um, carpentry, it's getting there, right? Um, it, it's not phenomenal, but it's fine. We actually have an experience boost on carpentry, I believe, because we started as a carpenter. Um, and remember, you what we need here is lots and lots of nails. All right, fantastic.
And look, you failed to produce any usable materials. That means we completely messed it up. It's less likely for us because we have good carpentry, but it's still possible, all right? So you can go through and then, you know, just bust up whatever it is that you want to try and get um, some furniture. Now, if you want to disassemble this right now, you'll see that it won't let you because there's jeans inside. So all you have to do is just take these jeans and put them on the ground, okay? And then, then you can right click and disassemble it. So you can't take apart anything that has stuff in it. The dream is to just, in somebody's shed, find a box of nails. And to be honest, that could be something that you do instead, um, is just go around looking everywhere for uh, some nails to find on your own instead of trying to, like, you know, forge them in this way. We didn't get any usable materials, which is, you know, another disaster. Now, you hear that? This alarm clock is going off. So you have to cl right click and say stop alarm. And um, that's terrifying. So I'm immediately going to right click and I'm going to say equip primary on my crowbar and I'm going to equip secondary on my bag and I'm going to move around and I'm going to see, yep, that zombie is running full speed at us. That's because the alarm went off on the alarm clock. So um, what you should what you should do if you see an alarm clock is just to make sure that the alarm is turned off. That guy already smashed through the window and is in the house. That's how quickly that can happen. All right. Um, so let's just, you know deal with this dude because we've got some nice stuff in here and oh he's on the outside no he's coming in all right so let's zoom in and just kind of greet him in here he's going to want to come talk to us about the alarm he was disturbed he does not like that we did that oh my god we've been bit stomp 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 smash him how could you do that now what happened was when I was fighting him, you saw that I moved off to the side and I was not backing up straight away like I should have done, okay? Because um, I pushed the wrong button on my keyboard and I should have probably just lured him outside. But here's what happens. We've been hit and we've been bitten and we're infected. And oh my gosh, we've been infected. What does that mean? Well, what that means is we get to show you what happens when you're about to die. So if you get infected, all right, we got bit on the hand, all right, and we can go ahead and we could try to treat this, you know, we could like go into our inventory and, and in our bag and, you know, we could like use disinfectant um, and uh, disinfect a bandage, you know, and, um, you know, just have a nice bandage and try to try to use this on ourselves you know like we could uh, we could apply this to ourselves we could fix up our hand you know all we want and just bandage ourselves up and see what's happening here and just like oh are we okay and well it's bandaged and maybe we are we've got minor pain so here's two things what you have to do the game will not tell you that quickly Okay, if you got the, the zombie infection, it's not going to just say infected and you got the zombie infection in that way. What you have to look out for are the symptoms of infection. So we're going to wait and see. But I think it's interesting for us to learn about that. Okay, so I made poor choices with alarm clocks and with zombies. And these are learning moments for us to say, okay, well, what happens if we get bit? All right, what happens? Are we dead? Let's see. Okay, we bandaged the hand up. We've got some pain. Let's go into our inventory and let's go ahead, move this over here for now. And I know that, okay, we have painkillers, so we can just, you know, take the, the painkilling pills. And you'll see that this minor pain um, moodle will go away. And I'm going to take this plank. I'm going to put it on the ground. We don't need it. Okay, and we can go over here. And we're going to drink from the sink. Okay, and we're going to go here. And let's see, we're a little bit hungry.
We don't want to eat that, though. We could eat ice cream for sure. Make ourselves feel better. Now, look at this. Our bandage has already become dirty on our hand, okay? So what you can do is you can right-click and you can say wash, okay? And, you know, you could wash uh, your gloves if you wanted to. Clean them up. We don't have any soap, so it's going to take a while. But there's so much good stuff happening here. Number one, alarm clock went off. Number two, zombie immediately came, broke through the window. That's how quick things can change in this game. You're just walking along. Everything is feeling peaceful. Now, washing our gloves, clean the gloves, but not the bandage. And what you need to do is actually change the bandage. So let's go ahead and just, you know, um, go ahead and remove the bandage from our left hand by right-clicking it. All right, and now we're bleeding and we're infected, okay? Um, and with this, what we can do is um, say, okay, well, um, can I disinfect um, a bandage? And we'll do this. And we are going to have do, 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 a bandage that is um, nice and disinfected in our inventory, okay? Um, sterilized bandage, and I'm gonna um, apply the bandage to our hand. We're bitten bleeding and infected so the reality is um you know full disclosure we've been bitten so being bitten is a death sentence so our character look we're anxious we're on edge we're in terrible shape when you get infected when you get bitten okay it's time it's time to admit that you've lost and what you want to do is just take your character okay and start dropping your stuff so you're going to go ahead and you're going to go into your character and you're going to just select everything that's on you and put it on the ground. So we're going to just take off everything, all of our clothes, and we're going to put it in a big pile right here on the ground and then we're going to take all of these tools all of this cool stuff i can walk right up here and just drag it and put it on the ground okay and now we're just a naked guy with a bandaged hand that um unfortunately is in very bad shape okay so when you get bit um or you get damaged enough and you get the infection okay it is time to say goodbye to that character and take off all their clothes because this character is eventually going to turn into a zombie. When this character does turn into a zombie, we get to make a new character and we can start in this same exact world that we're in, okay? And um, we can... Oh, I don't have anything to make a mark. Um, okay, well, let me pick up a pen then. Yeah, let me grab that. Starting in this exact world, we can come back to this exact location, okay? And what we'll do is we will find our body, okay? And I'm going to just put a big skull, like, right there, okay? So we know where we are, and we can come back here and get all of our stuff. The, it's very, very important to do this because the way that you think about Project Zomboid is like, it's almost like a rogue light where you can build up a base and then if a character dies okay you make another one you go back and you still have your base so if we were to con finish fortifying this whole place okay um then what would happen is that i'm going to by the way speed up time um considerably what would happen is that um we would be able to come back here and just use this as our base again all right so I'm going to go ahead and just be like, oh, I'm tired. Um, and let's just kind of close the door um, right here. And let's go here and let's sleep. Yeah, I'm sure. Then we'll just pass some time. Everything's fine, right? It's all good. But we have good stuff here. We have a lot of tools. We have a shotgun. Okay. Um, we're a nervous wreck. We're terrified. Why is that? Well, these are symptoms of something terrible. So I want to show you, you know, 
as much about the game as I can in this guide. And this is a fun one because you're going to die and you're going to die a lot. And you want to know, need to know how to like build from death, which is to say you learn all the skills, you learn how to play and stuff from your previous body, but you also want to be able to keep any of the cool stuff that you found. Okay. So this way, um, we are in a position where this character, we can keep, you know, all of our stuff, it's here, and we can even fortify this if we want. And um, we're queasy, we're nervous, we're hungry. What's going on? And we're, we're feeling sad. And oh my god, this guy's coming for us. So here comes a zombie. Here comes a bunch of zombies. Now this is actually bad because I don't want there to be zombies by my body. So I'm just going to run full on, okay, and lure them away. I'm going to lure these zombies over here. I'm going to push I, close the inventory. I don't want them over by my house with my stuff. I want them down here. And you could start to see how many zombies there actually are. There are zombies coming out of the trees, okay? And... They're all on us. So what we can do is we can just dodge them and run away like this, okay? And zombies, we can practice. What you can do is just practice the business of losing zombies that are on you, okay? So I'm going to jump over this fence, and I'm going to lose them this way, and I'm going to jump over this fence, and I'm going to hide behind the house, okay? I'm going to stop running, just walk. I'm going to speed it up. And we're going to, um, oh, right, you can't speed it up when you're moving. Um, I'm going to just walk over here, okay? And continue to be, like, try to break line of sight, okay? And you can see that actually the zombies aren't following me. So this is another skill that you really want to develop. And oh my gosh, we're in the trees. Look at that. When you pass through the trees, do you see how much your field of vision narrows? It's very dangerous to go through the trees like that. Okay, we can go down here. Just walk around naked. Okay, speed up time. Okay, so I'm just waiting for this character to die. And the reason is, like I was explaining, when I look at my character and I go to my health, and I have this bandage, I'm gonna take the bandage off, okay? You'll notice that I'm bitten, it's no longer infected. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm cured from the infection? No, it's like I said, the game does not tell you that you have the Nox infection. You will observe that from symptoms like, you know, this anxiety and some other symptoms that start to happen, the queasiness, all of these things that happen slowly. It takes a few days for you to actually succumb to the infection. Seeing infection isn't bad. That means you can treat that. Um, antibiotics and the like can help you. And other medicine and treatment, you can get rid of it over time with, with sterilized stuff. But what it does mean is this character is dead because I got bit. And if it says bit, if it says you've been bitten, okay then that means you're a zombie. That you have a 100% chance of turning into a zombie eventually. Now, it won't happen immediately, okay? But it will happen. All right? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just... We can explore the map if we want, you know? See what's out there. You can lure your zombies away from yourself once you've dropped all of your gear if you want to but i've dropped my gear and this is just something i like to do you of course don't have to do this but i personally okay like to get my own body and kill my own character i just don't like having my old body being a zombie wandering around i want to put myself out of my misery so i usually leave my naked self close to my body so that I'm easy to kill. Also, what I could do if I want um, to make myself real easy is I could go over here 
All right. And I could run in his little shed. And I could close this shed up. Okay. Well, here. Oh, okay. Hi. Hey. Hey, you know what you can do? You can... Yep, she bit me. That's rude. You could practice pushing people. Just practice your combat. Urr. 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 Hey. And then she's on the ground, and I can, like, smash her head. Kind of. Not really. Oh, boy. They're coming. And we're bleeding. But death is imminent. Massive blood loss. Okay. Well, that speeds things up. So, this character um, was amazing and had a great run. And we're going to pick this up by learning how to bounce back from death. It's a great learning experience because what you can do um, is you can say, okay, did I like that character? Did I like the skills that I have? Do I want to be a carpenter again? Do I want to experiment with perks and traits? What do I want to do at this point? And oh my God, it's over. Now look at this. There we are, we're back. So if you see this naked zombie, that's you. And it's great to put myself out of my misery. I like it, okay? So what you wanna do is click new character and we wanna spawn in Rosewood again so that we can find all of the stuff that we have on the map. And if you do, you'll see that the map that you get with your next character is the same map that you had. And this way, you can keep building on your progress if you choose to. Now, you could, of course, every time start a new map, but I like to just build up and build up as I learn. All right? So, everyone, we learned about deconstruction, fortification, um, you know, exploration and getting bitten, the death sentence, and how to deal with dying. I hope you're still finding this series useful and fun, everyone. Take care.